And we are live. Yes, we are. Right, I've located Liddell. He was setting up whatever he needed to set up, but we're good to go. So he's going to be hitting up uh, the group in a moment, the page, and then I'll be able to invite him over to this chat. So once again, thank you everybody for joining through. This is Loose Lips. This is the final chat of the day. Uh, as we're saying, I've, I've chatted with a lot of cool, cool people today. Uh, Sophia McIntosh, who was telling us about presenting and living down in London and uh, yeah, how, how that was uh, pr- pursuing and being for her. And then we also had, yes, she sent, we, we, I'm going to, I'm going to with that. From Golden Team Gym. Uh, that was an incredible chat as well. Real good spirit. Uh, we also had Adam French, a musician who signed, who signed to Virgin and EMI, who was telling us the in and outs of the music industry and how it like represented for him. And then just then, we had Claire Scott, who is an amazing, amazing soul, like just talking through what she's overcome in life. But going back to the first guest that I had, uh, Sophia, she says that she knows our next guest. So, possibly late, operating on BMT like we do. (laughs) Welcome to the room, Liddell Bryant. What's going on? What's going on, on, people? (laughs) What yeah. are you saying, man? You good? I'm safe, man. You know, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quarantine vibes, innit? You know how it goes. Yeah. Lockdown. Lockdown, bro. Uh. Are you finding it? Yeah, all right, man. It's all right. There's plenty to do. I've got loads of stuff to do. Um, I'm supposed to be in the middle of a monologue challenge, but I've had to kind of, you, you know what I mean by my monologue challenges, don't you, Ben? Um, if yeah, people but don't know, we want to explain what your monologue challenge yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, I do a monologue every single day for 30 days straight um, or whatever period of time it might be for five days straight. I've only ever done 30 days, um, but with the kids around and, you know, the, you, you, this energy all day, they just take up so much time, you know. So I've just, what I've done is I've said, I'm going to just keep doing it throughout this next 30 days, but I'm not going to put pressure on myself to be pushing work out there constantly, you know. So I'm going to keep what pushing. I touch on. Do you feel like, in this time, there is that almost pressure that you must be active, you must be productive, because there's so much yeah. overflow that's going on, but at the mm. same time, if it ain't practical, it ain't then going to be what you want it to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's hard to find it, uh, the time at the, at the best times, uh, and to find the energy as well. It's not just about time, it's also about energy, you know? Mm. Um, and right now, energy is being spent up on so many like stressful things so therefore it, it, it can be tricky to get yourself into that creative space but that being said at the same time to be creative in in some way or capacity or to, to 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 be active in some way or capacity is is crucial i think in these times i've seen a lot of posts about like oh if you don't come out of this quarantine period with a, a at least one new skill then you diss that and the other if you don't do this you don't do that and they're those really harsh ones and and they're designed not to, to put you down, but actually to just make you think, you know what, there's, there's some summit right in that. There's yeah, but there's summit in it. There's summit in it in the way that those are... I think that at the minute, there is a lot of shaming. I feel like there yeah, is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like, stupid, man. I'm not into that. I'm not into I'm that. I'm speaking with uh, one of my mates who she's she's currently pregnant and she's got a little in. And mm. uh, like she was going on about the homeschooling vibe almost. Yeah, like, man. It seems to be like, the, the, you know, the greatest professor teacher that there is. And it's yeah. like, it's all right for you just to like chuck him some what's it or something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's true, man. There is a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure. I did a monologue actually for the very first monologue of this, this, this season of monologues that I'm doing. And it's called Homeschooling. And it was basically me just kind of expressing some of my like challenges within it. Like, I don't want to be up at 9.30 in the morning doing what feels like Pythagoras theorem. It's about adding and subtracting. You get me, boy? It feels like some crazy, crazy thing. At the time, um, but actually, schooling isn't just about maths, English, and science. Schooling is also about, you know, doing the washing up. You know, my I've had my son outside changing spark plugs with me. You get me? I've got a, 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 an old school GTI Golf here yeah, that I've been fixing up for years now, and we got it started the other day. Me and him. Do you get me? So it's, it's like, yeah, <laughs> the so that I, yeah, my little apprentice man. He'd rather be inside watching Alvin and the Chipmunks, but you know, I've got to pull him out every now and again and do a little bit of little bit of handiwork with him. But it's not, like I say, it's not just about the maths, the English, the science. It's also about the practical life skills as well. You know, doing a bit of cooking, doing a bit of cleaning, 
I, we were outside the other day and, and we were playing football and I thought, how can I incorporate some maths? Because during our like period of quarantine, we've come up with a little bit of a, a, a timetable for him to do schooling. And that's what a lot of people have done. And I hats off to them because a lot of people are grafting away on their jobs and then they're also doing a bit of homeschooling as well. And it's tough. Um, but yeah, we were supposed to be doing maths. And I said, oh, let's go have a little kick about. So we went outside, we had a little kick. Look about. Look so, eh? He looks a baller. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he looks a baller. It looks like he's got, he looks like he's got, he, he, he's got has a got, he has got a little touch on him and he's fast as well. He's fast. So incorporating like football and maths for him. He's good at maths. He's brilliant at maths. I don't know where he gets that from. It's not me. It's definitely his mum. But yeah, man, I just did a little football maths. He loved it. He loved it. And I enjoyed it as well, man. So, yeah. So, so let's talk about that. Like, like, you know, I, I, I'm fortunate in myself and how I feel that I just have to focus on me. So when you've got other people to focus on and you've yeah. got everything else as well, like, as you say, is it, is it quite challenging, you know, making sure they're entertained, looked after, yeah, trying to do your own stuff as well, like you were saying before about the energy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely challenging, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's incredibly rewarding as well. So... You know, when you, for in my instance, in for example, like when I've been homeschooling all day and I managed to smash out a, a, a monologue all in the same day, you get me? And usually a day for me would be like, you get me, get up, school run, you get me, work run for the missus, you know, get home, get the little one settled off to have a little nap so I can have two minutes to myself, you get me? Then I'll crack on with getting the dinner ready for later on, prepping all of that So. Yeah, man, it, it, it's challenging. It takes up energy, but if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, man. You know, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. So that's why I keep telling myself, and that's why I just keep pushing, man, because the kids are important. Do you feel like that gives an extra boost to when you do come up with the stuff like the monologue challenge or ways of pushing yourself? Do you feel like, you know, you, you give so much to your family and, and respect mm. like it is, but then mm. you also have this creative outlet, which, you know, I honestly think you're one of the most gifted performers oh, thank you, bro. and thank you've got you, this other you. side and it's like well you've done all that so you know you shouldn't let that like stifle if you know what i mean so do you hit yeah, yeah, that yeah. at the same because you've given so much in a day do you, do, or do you feel spent i think there's a there's there's a, an aspect of yes feeling spent but i don't know anybody in this industry in the acting industry in the performing industry that don't feel spent at some point you know and i'm i, I actually like i said about it being rewarding um, it's not just rewarding because I get to, uh, you know, to to develop my son and, and, and help him to develop. But it's also rewarding because actually there's a sense of fulfillment from my perspective. And I'm like, yo, wait a minute. I've, I've done all of this in, in one day. So yeah, I might feel spent, but actually there's an energy that comes from from these interactions, from these family oriented interactions. And that's that's nice, man. That's 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 it's powerful. You know me, I'm always thinking of like how to get you spotted or seen because I believe in your ability so much. <laughs> and, um, you know, with your monologues, have you seen yeah. that Sir Patrick Stewart? Shout out Sir Patrick Stewart, by the way. Anti fatty, yes. Dub Y, gentleman. Yo. He's a yes. super spear. And um, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. been doing his uh, monologue challenge. So Is I it? wondered if there's something where you could maybe like use the same hashtag or. Maybe yeah, do yeah, yeah. He's doing, or maybe you know, go back and forth and see if because he seems like the sort of person that if he if he's seen it, he'd vibe. Yeah, 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 absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's the thing as well. Like that's, in fact, you know, you're talking about feeling spent, feeling a little bit like Ugh. the energy that I don't have in the day is not like a physical energy. It's the, the mental energy to like do all of the social media stuff and you know be, be reaching out to people and networking. And when I was younger, I didn't have no kids. I was moving and shaking and it was all good, but social media wasn't as, I wasn't active on social media. It wasn't as active within itself anyway. Um, but yeah, man, there's definitely something there. That's one thing that I feel like this year and this, during this period, I need to be pushing forward all of that social media stuff and reaching out to people like Sir Patrick and yeah, man, connecting with my fellow actors. Well, Sophia said, she she'd be on it, you know. She she wants to do. She's there writing yeah. a couple of sketches, and she, apparently right. she's friends. She's friends with your missus. She was saying yeah, 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 yeah. Them not go yeah. way back, way yeah, way back. Yeah, she went college with you or something. Yeah, yeah, she did, man. Yeah. We went college together. For, yeah, 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 man. So, so she's she's doing well, you know. So the, yeah, the agent she signed to is my dream agent. Who I want to be signed to mm. a guy mm. called John Noel. So, okay. 
she's on it, man. She's in good circles, good hands. And uh, she was saying at the end that she's writing a few sketches, this and that. And I was like, yo, Liddell's the one. Uh, yeah, I'm like, down I'm for that. that. Yeah, so definitely. Maybe definitely. just reaching, connecting, just say, you know, because, uh, you know, that's the only way that things get... Yeah, yeah, things can happen, happen innit? It's true. It's very true. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to reach out to her. Let me, let me sort of bring it back to sort of early days then. Like, when you were doing your um, chicken shop, Yes. Shakespeare. Yes. Um, was it easier or harder because we were a collective? You know, like to get something rolling. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was. It was. It was. It was challenging at times. I think it was a lot easier getting things filmed um, and and kind of being being staying motivated as well. Because like, if I wasn't able to, you know, to muster up the energy or strength to do something. Tyron or Tanya or Shane or Leah would be able to and, and would have that energy. And so it was nice having that collective people to lean on, etc. How, um, how many how many were members? Do a do a like. So there was five certified people that were like there from 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 day. I would say day dot, but actually they were they were there as we were building the, the bridges and as we were building up the, the, the brick wall as it were. So yeah. 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 Why? Why would you say that sort of uh, seemed to serve its time? Because it still seems some of it. I don't. To be honest with you, I messaged Tyrone yesterday. Yeah, like, yo, we need to chat. Um, I don't think it has served its time. No, I think there's still, there's still, I don't think still it scratched the surface. Nah, I don't think at all. I think there was some challenges within, like, how do we make this thing? Well, how do we make some pee off of it? How do we mm. maintain it? How do we, yeah. Everybody was busy. Everybody was a lot younger. So, you know, we were moving and shaking in different circles. Um, but I think it's definitely still got legs. And, and actually, it was always, for me, it was always a stomping ground and something to springboard off of and, and move forward with. You get me? So, well, yeah. well it's, it's obviously got the, the juxtaposition that people are expecting it, which mm. is incredible. I think for me, if I was like sort of positioning how to go about it, you do yeah. your videos... And mm. then people want to come see the live shows, and that's where you make your pee off the live shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah of you course. do it more as a this is for you, and you make it interactive, right? What's your favorite sonnet, or which bit mm. do you want me mm. to do, or should we do more contemporary yeah. bits? Or and it, that's the interactive bit. Let me yeah, yeah. feel like they've been listened to, and then yeah, of course I want to go see the best bits done live. And if you could almost create a show around a certain mm. like certain set ones, but then. You know, the mm. bit, you remember when you did the bit with me? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. you were in the yeah, audience and you rocked up on stage. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you're almost breaking that fourth wall. Yeah. That's what I think it needs to, to have because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got, yeah, he's, he, of course he's the got le legs. It was one guy said to me, one of the olders, he was like, yeah, man, this thing's got legs, you know. Yeah, it's got legs, man. In fact, you know what, Lida? It have thick legs. It have some thick legs, you know? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Meanwhile, if you see it walk down the street, I was like, Yo. I so yeah, man, that. I I, it was it was that. a mad thing. It was a mad mad era. Um, they came like point where there was some kind of some sort of politics and 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 stresses because everybody was working hard, man. And it felt like some people were kind of like heard more than others were heard, and it was challenging. But that was all part of the process that we didn't realize needed to happen. Um, and now everybody's much more kind of like just level headed and chilled out and like got their own you know ponds to swim in as as it were get me where we can come back to the big swimming pool when we're ready as it as it is so, so yeah man i think it's gonna it's gonna take off again and we're gonna start doing things again is, is that a lot of discipline obviously learning the, the the material yeah definitely um it does take some time sometimes sometimes it just floats in there real easy but as actors we have these little you know these little ways of of managing and these ways of kind of like yeah just Fit me feeling our way through the text, um, and these little tactics and techniques that we can utilize to help us to just yeah be on point. And so, yeah, man. So, anybody who's listening, uh, what chicken shop ships beer is, it's a collective of people who predominantly are from Chapel Town, uh, from the Leeds area, area, yeah. Uh, mm. And for the status quo, keeping it real, people probably won't position them to be able to knock out some shit some shit's yeah, yeah, in the way that we're doing it yeah yeah, yeah. And legit and they'll, you know the collective go to places like Dixie Chicken or contemporary places but yeah man that's where we started Chicken Cottage Chicken Cottage <laughs> man 
So they'll, they'll maneuver and do credible Shakespearean pieces um, that they they adapt to modern day scenarios and situations and really put it, it basically Shakespeare meets kid old in a in a, in a, you know, <laughs> a quote to make that people get it. obviously it's more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, you know yeah, oh standard. Yeah, but it is, it is essentially that. So we do Shakespeare in our modern day clothing. We take the works of Shakespeare and we produce them in modern day settings through flash mob theatre and film. That's what we say. Um and that's our kind of little spiel but we don't dress up in your tights and, uh, you know, keep it all out. Uh, we, we did actually start off, like, doing RP, which is Received Pronunciation. Hang tight. Asad, who went to drama school with me. Hey, hey, just come in. Blame it on the style. Yes, even. <laughs> Amen. Easy. Yeah, man. Couple <laughs> people I know up on here. I just clocked this little thing at the bottom, innit? Yeah, man. Easy. What? I'm a brother in here. Ah, hi. Anyways, yes, yeah, so. Yeah, man, we, we started to kind of, yeah, get our own little flow and our own little style and whatnot. So, yeah. Hey, my missus is just got hello, ba- hello, baby. I like, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah, what's, what, what, anyway, go on. Next question. No, no, no. We, 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 I was sort of explaining to people if they weren't familiar with it what it was. And mm. you were saying that you don't wear tights, but then you were going to. Oh, say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we did start off doing a lot of kind of RP stuff. Like I say, received pronunciation. That's why I got onto Assad, yeah. Um, and that's the very, um, hello, and yeah, uh, that. And actually, somebody said to us, you know what? You don't need to do any of that. Just just be yourselves. And that's when it really started to work. So, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing it in our own personal way is quite powerful. Well, very powerful, actually. So, yeah, man. Mm. Do, you, do, do you feel that Shakespeare still has a place? Oh, definitely. It's quite a universal... It's that definitely universal. Um, it does have a place. It seems to not... Sorry to cut you. Do you think mm. he has a place across all... all people of... Gener- all people of society? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Because the stories are universal. Yeah, the stories are very much like, and even like, even without going deep, deep into the stories, when you start looking at s- specific monologues and you start looking at um, at, at p- particular particular sonnets, and you're like, right, this relates to, to how I feel. There's a monologue, uh, a sonnet that I did with my little brother, and at the time, he was the closest thing that I had to to like a child of my own because I used to look after him, spend a lot of time with him, um, and he he was in the video. And he got his school uniform on and everything. And, and now I see it now. And I'm like, right, he's a big man. Now. He's got a beard and everything. And and I was talking about how um, how when we grow in the sonnet, we're talking about how when we grow, we want to leave a legacy. And the biggest way of leaving a legacy is 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 by having a child. But it's, it's kind of deeply, it's deeply coded in there. And so like for you to unpick that, doing that sat at a table in, in English literature. Nah. Not for me. But when a brother comes in with a snapback on and he's like, hey, my lord, and da, 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 you're like, oh, this does relate to me. So that's why it was relatable. But I think this is, I think this is my point is, um, you know, Shakespeare seems very elite. It mm. seems that, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. And the way that you're breaking it down, but I think something like what you're doing has such a, it can have such a profound impact, impact mm. within the community, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Off the back of that, it can also raise social issues and give people a sense of, mm. like, you must feel it when you go a place and people probably, like, look and think is whatever, and then yeah, you, like, yeah, yeah. land it and you're, like, you see, you like, it's proper a Ryukin to the red. The like, yeah, 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 like, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with so, you, I'm with you. To instill that within the community, but then also get that to sprinkle into everyday mm. situations, i.e. voting, i.e. the impact of... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. I, I think, like, that's what... This has a yeah. real power, a real, like, one, if you, if you get me. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. A real, yeah. like, mm. changing people's perceptions. Definitely. Definitely. I think that, like, that was maybe where we kind of missed... That we missed the, the, the boat a little bit and we didn't realise, oh, yeah, it's it's... It's incredibly topical, but at the same time, um, we did do some things that was that were topical. There was an era when um, there was a lot of immigrants coming in to the country, and people were really kind of. In fact, it was the whole kind of the, the initial campaign to start Brexit off, and we did a, a response to that, which was 
uh, Sir Thomas More, which is just only a couple of years ago being established as being a Shakespeare play. And when we did Sir Thomas More, it was one of them things where we we, we, we knew that it was absolutely relevant to what was happening at the time. Um, and yeah, we, we put that out there and the response that we got was was, was great. We didn't actually put the finished film out there. We, we put out just a little cheeky, like um, a little cheeky trailer sort of thing. And the response from even just that was, was big, man. So yeah, you're absolutely right, man. There is things out there that, that, that it does bear relevance to. Yeah, definitely. Do you feel that that's one of the reasons you got into acting and uh, performing and maybe going a bit more down the thespian side mm. is like not just the creative outlet, but like you say, it's legacy and how it does connect and how it is transferable to very different uh, different situations in society. Like, yeah, you ever, definitely. You into it, did you ever get into it like that deep? Because you, you, to me, you you are like you know a spiritual deep brother. But I wonder mm. if it was just something that you were like, I like, and then this side of it came later. Yeah, no. Do you know what I fell into acting? I want like I didn't grow up going going to acting school or acting classes or anything like that. I was a deep deep passion. I was always on on my football. Yes, anti Hugh Coles, Lucy, hey, official leads, boop boop. <laughs> Everyone's getting a I I tight I I'm tight vibe right I now. Know. Shout out from my boy Dwight. Shout out Dwight. Yes, Brad Dwight. Brad yes. Lee to to Dwight in the in the unit, man. <laughs> so yeah, my I forgot what your question was. Oh yeah, getting into the acting. Yeah, I, and, I'm sorry, no, not getting into the acting, but was the uh, a depth a depth of like the impact it could have when you yeah. got into it. Yeah. So I didn't understand that initially. I literally just, like I said, fell into it. But then when I, when I, I think I did a, a play called Roughwell Scandals, yeah? <laughs> Man like Leon's laughing. Yeah, yeah. Leon Lewis, everyone's <laughs> going to right, But his yeah. mum's watching as well, actually, right? You, oh, you, I, I set up a live video before and you were nowhere to be seen and apparently Leon's mum said, and you put it in group, like, he's always late. <laughs> ah! Yeah, I'm always late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never on time, never on time. <laughs> I was trying to find me out. I was trying to find me out. You don't want to see what's underneath this, that. <laughs> I'm free. Let's reveal what's underneath. All right, you ready? One, One two, two, three. three. Ah, <laughs> Barbers are open, mate. <laughs> the barber's not My open. hair's like a grown out refreshing. No, mate. No, 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 no. Looking like, looking like a homeless guy. But yeah, I can't remember what we were saying. <laughs> no, sorry. So when you, got, when you fell into it, you fell into it. Yeah. Not, we, not understanding the magnitude of, of like how powerful how powerful this thing can be. Um, you know, I think that music, music, you hear music wherever you go. You get me? Like, regardless, and that in itself is so, so powerful. Super powerful. Um, but I didn't, I didn't appreciate how powerful, like, how, how powerful the acting industry is and how powerful the film and television industry is. Um, and so that makes me feel like now I'm at this stage where I'm, my career is going from strength to strength. Um, I'm building my network. I'm in conversations about things I'm writing. I've got creative energy just flowing. And, and I want to I wanna make an impact. And I see that there's not enough black history. And when I say black history, I don't just make, I don't just make it like, oh, yeah, it's just black people. No, because we live in a predominantly white country. However, oh, there's a very, very wait, wait, deep wait, shared sorry. heritage. You froze, you froze when we, you said we live in. Go. Sorry, you froze when we said we live in. Could you please pick up on okay. there? Okay, yeah, so we live in a very predominantly white, but yet multicultural country. Um, and so it's, it's vitally important that we tell these stories, but from a, a vantage point of, of a shared heritage, not just from a vantage point of I'm a black man and you need to hear what I'm saying, because regardless of our journeys, there's also been Asian men. There's also been Chinese men. There's also been white women. There's also been people of all different walks of life that have been a part of our journey as black people in this country. And so I'm really interested in, in bringing those to light, but not only just bringing them to light and doing a little film and then move on to the next. Also putting together educational resources so that the kids can, can truly get to grips with this. So one of my favourite books at the moment that I keep referring to just briefly with my, with my son and I need to put together a proper learning um, a, a proper learning program for him, but it's it's called Black History in the UK. Um, when I find the book, in fact, I'm gonna get Sheree. You're already downstairs. Can you pass me that book? It's on the windowsill, darling. All right, yeah. 
Lovely. <laughs> All right, nice. Let's see if she does it. I'll see if she does it. Um, but yeah, books like that are super, super powerful in just bringing to light the fact that, you know, there was that era where people were talking about the chavs, the chavs this, the chavs that. Just remember, they were rocking the Burberry and all that and a yeah, couple yeah. of belts and that. And what people kind of, they, they call them Jafakans and all the rest of it. And, and, all, and, and what people didn't appreciate was that our culture was being celebrated. People were, 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 were celebrating our culture by wanting to be a part of it. You get me? And actually... That's what's happening, but people are, are making the most of it. And, and that's what I'd like to do. There's, like, for example, there's, a, there's a, 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 an amazing story about a, a, circus, a circus master. Yes, yeah, son. Yeah, you see, I got it. I got it. I got it. Here, here, here. <laughs> Thank you, baby boy. Yes, I got it. So, yo, this is the book I was talking about. Yeah? Let me see if I can. Black British history, black influences on British culture between 19... 1948 and 2016. So it's looking at black British culture and like the, the influence that that's had uh, in this country during those periods of time since the Windrush era, right up to 2016. Um, and there's quite a few people on the, on, on the cover. And one of the first questions that it asks, yeah, is there, must, there will be a reason or one of the first statements, there is an obvious reason as to why you can only name a few of the people on there. There's got you got Idris Elba on there, and you've got you've got John Barnes on there, and people like that that are, that, are, that are really well known. But then you've also got you've got people that you look at and you're like, I know I know who he is, but I don't know I don't know his name. But yet you can give me the name of seven, eight people that you've never met on Instagram that have never influenced your life or are part of British culture. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is again, like I say, is a very powerful book that I hope to be utilizing. Um, in the future with my monologues and with the work that I create. But like I was saying, there's a really, really interesting story of, of a, an African prince called Prince Alamayu. And, and he, would, he was born in Ethiopia and was brought to, to England as a child. But it gets better. He wasn't just brought to England. He was brought to Yorkshire. Oh, it gets better. He was brought to Leeds, people. And you know where he died? right here in Leeds, of pneumonia. And I went to the house that he was actually, where he died, I stood in the spot that he passed away in, and there's an energy surrounding that. But a lot of people don't know that. That's a story about... Which uh, part of Leeds? So it was in um, Headingley. Has he got a blue plaque on it? He will have a blue plaque, yeah. He will have, yeah. But it's... it's so it, is, it is, it is, it is a notice then. It's it is, yeah, like... it's a recognised place. Yeah. Um, as, as the, as the, in fact, I'm saying that, maybe it's not actually. Maybe it hasn't. But again, there's, there's so many other stories. Pablo Frank. Have you heard of Pablo Frank? Nah. He's quite a well-known guy in Leeds, actually. I, I was quite surprised. But he, he was a circus master, yeah, who, who was born in Devonshire or, or, or grew up in Devonshire. But he married, a York, he married a Yorkshire lass. So check this one out now. He has this big top tent, yeah, on the wreck. Now, for those people who don't know where the wreck is or what the wreck is, that's on Chapel Town Road. It's the football pitches. And the little play area, that's all the wreck. And he used to have a big top tent there hundreds of years ago. Again, one of the biggest, most celebrated circus masters in this country. And we know how much everyone loves us. You love the circus, don't you, people? Yes, you do. Well, him, he was, he's buried in Leeds, bro. He's buried up the road just by the university. And it's like, these are things that are about, about black and British history that we're not we're not connecting with or, 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 or really celebrating. And so I'd like to do a couple of films and a couple of theatre productions and things and, and that sort of stuff around, around these, these amazing stories. Is that so, where yeah. your writing's leading to? Yeah, man. Yeah, I've got, I've got one thing that I'm writing at the moment. Do you, that do you find that um, as an actor, it gives you a lot more empowerment by writing as well? Yeah, because definitely. you might not be getting yeah. certain cast, you've still created... Oh, definitely. But, and, and sorry, and also... Are you writing with you in mind? Are you going to star in it or is it for other people? Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm putting me in the forefront of that, right? <laughs> no, I said silly question. Nah. Nah, there is some stuff that's definitely got people, um, other people, in, I've got other people in mind for and, and would like to see other people kind of, yeah, be at the forefront of. But there's a couple of things that I'm kind of at the, at the forefront of, of, of as well. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's an array of different things. I'm really interested in... Um, black female stories as well and female stories in general because i don't feel like there's enough yeah like, being raised by women um, yeah. 
I was raised by women and so like I Same. I truly, truly appreciate strong, the, the, strong the, women. The, yeah, strong women just it, in it, it, in it when you get to a point and you know we started this conversation by you saying like, you know, this homeschooling hmm. X, Y, and Z. Like, yeah. That's what our Mars did without even batting an eyelid and was oh. like four jobs on the go as well. Get and, me. Like, oh. Still like making sure that we're looking clean and fresh yeah. to go to school. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Man? I remember like, being at school, yeah, and and this girl said to my brother, she said, oh, I've done so much to my finger. It's been hurting for days. Can you ask your mum? I'll tell her the symptoms. When I, when you get home, I'm going to call you. And my brother was like, why? She was like, oh, your mum's a nurse, isn't she? Isn't she a doctor or something? She works at the hospital. We're like, nah, nah, she, she, she serves the food to people at the hospital. What do you mean? She's a ward housekeeper? What, what are you on about? But she, pre she, she assumed that we were really well off because mum was looked after, you get me? Mm. And so, yo, that the strength is not just like, I'm anguish, angry, yo, I'm, I'm a strong woman. But the strength for, and resilience to be able to bring yeah. up. Like, I'm one of six. I've got six brothers and sisters, man. Yeah, so it's like, my mum's got, like, strength. And the same with my auntie, man, Leon's mum. Yo, just strength, man, you know? And, yeah, they're, they're truly appreciated, most definitely. I think that's the key. I think, you know, um, one of the things I was going to lean on earlier uh, mm. and I was going to ask you when you sort of found acting and you said that uh, music was around, but acting, I was going to lean on to why maybe you didn't choose music over acting, but I also wanted to ask as well, mm. do you feel that there is not enough, uh, there's not enough representation for people to feel like we can, uh, we can attain mm the careers that aren't been presented to us. So for example, when Black Panther came out, everyone yeah. was like, yo, first star black cast, rare, rare. And it got its love. It's got its, you know, what it is, what it is. Mm. But for me, it was more the celebration of it can be done. But then when I watched coming to America, that was predominantly black cast. And you know, it's not about making it about race. It's not about making it anything mm. like that. It's just making it about as a young person, who you aspire to look up to, and when you yeah. see somebody that's more like yourself doing yeah, something, yeah, yeah. you straight away feel drawn to "I can do that," and it's creating those conversations and opportunities by then, you know, spreading it out to society so more people mm. in society think they can function. So, my questions are: Did music ever uh, appear to be a thing before you came to acting? Yeah. And also, in your latter things of what you're creating. Mm. Is that a thought where you're like, next generation, this is for you, so that you feel like not only do you yeah. know your history, but you feel like you can you can be what I'm doing as well. Yeah, definitely. So with, with regards to your first question, music, why like I said I said music has always been a part of my life. My dad was a DJ, my brother's a DJ, my cousin's a DJ, everybody, every male in my family has been a DJ apart from me. But I sing. None of them can sing. You see it there? Yeah, no, you, you, yo, 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 let me pause. microphone. Eh? Let me pause you. Sorry, right? And please continue with the other qu the questions that I've asked. But yeah. you do a side project with Tom Fennick and uh, Jack, who's Jack Wolf, ah, who's a yeah, 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 man yeah, yeah. producer, <laughs> and, and uh, the brothers, the two brothers. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. The two twins. They're not twins, but I know, you know... Actually, Adam, you um, are. They are twins, aren't they? They're not twins. Ah, uh, listen... Then we'll have this conversation another time. People are, hello, hello, Chloe, love. Ben, Yo, shout out to Bowers as well, my boy. Yes, Bowsy. And shout out, to, uh, shout out to Chip, who's just joined me. Brothers. Yes, Chip, uh, Chip, Chip. Yeah, yeah, mate. But no, mate, so I, I've, heard, I've heard a few. So yeah, I do, I do sing. Music has always been a part of my life. I, it's, it's tough. I, for me, I'm like, I would have probably uh, kind of gone down the music route. My brother does music as well. And I've always said to him, look, if you go, if you push it, yeah, then I'll follow you with it. But I'm going to do my acting thing because I can control that. With the music, I was like, ah, there's, there's, there's so many people that I've worked with over the years and I've been like, if you are at the forefront, I'm down for it. Like, if you can push it and if it takes over, then yo, I'm fine with that. I'm actually comfortable with it. So yeah, I do do a bit of music and I, I do enjoy it. And I Why probably... Why you never wanted to drive that? Um... Just because the passion for the for the acting, the acting tough is stuff is 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 tough, man, and you've got to be committed to it. And likewise with with music, it, you've got to be committed to it. I don't know anybody who's a success that ain't committed to to one of their one of their you know passions. And acting was what I decided to be, you know, focused on. And that might change in years to come, but yeah, man, that's where my heart's at, and yeah, that's where I'm well, gonna I be pushing. 
I was speaking with a, a signed music performer earlier, a mate called Adam French, who signed yes. the Virgin BMI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he was mentioning the fact that in his downtime, he doesn't own my like, games console. He's just constantly writing. And mm. you could tell it's an obsession. And me as a creative, right? Like, I love so many different outlets. You know, this mm. is an outlet for me. Writing is yeah, an yeah. outlet for me. Comedy is an outlet. DJ is an outlet. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Age, I get to tell a conversation through the different mediums. But at the same time, I, I'm obsessed with being creative, but I mm. need a discipline. Whereas I think if you're obsessed on the one thing, then you're going to be disciplined because you're obsessed with it. When you spread, you know, it's crazy, crazy. Thing. Yeah. I, and that's the thing when you're creative, when you've got a creative mind, the, the energy can, can, it can be so sporadic, but actually that can be useful at the same time. Like the other day I was, I was, I was weird. I was sat downstairs in the kitchen um, writing some. So I started writing this thing that I'm in talks with with Channel 4 at the moment because, you know, they're doing a big move to Leeds. Yeah, uh, yeah. So there's been a lot of people kind of pushing me to, 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 to make contact with them. So I did that. I've been writing that. And then I came upstairs and took some photographs for another side project, which is a vintage um, clothing store that I'm on. Um, so I'm, I'm pushing Online that out. Or, uh, yeah, it's on, like, it's on Depop and all that jazz. It's just a little extra side burner, you know. Um, and then hustle. And, and yeah, man. And then and then uh, somebody had sent me some tunes, and I see Hang Tight, and I see he's not on here right now. But yo, Hang Tight, anyway, he sent me a song. So I said, you know what? Let me just 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 touch the mic because I'd recently got some some recording stuff. So I got that on the go, and then I'd finished doing that, and I thought, right, let me just shoot a quick cheeky monologue. So that was like five different projects all in one. And I get what you're saying, that like spreading yourself so thin, it can be like, uh, it, could, it could be draining even more so. But at the it's, same... Yeah, go on. I, think you're gonna, I know, I think you're all going to say it. At the same time, it's like, it, it, the, 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 there is a level of of like needing to just get it out. Needing you're not to kind trapped of just... in one. You're exactly. Not, yeah, and do that, you know what I mean? Absolutely. You can, you can be like, oh, I don't feel like writing. Right, I'm going to do that. And exactly. it's still the and same the level of still authenticity goes, in yeah. it. And it's still like, and it's like a wheel. And some things I take more seriously than others. I'm not just, I'm not going to write at certain times. You know, after I've come out, after I've come home from a crazy night out, I'm not going to go pull out my laptop and start writing. But I might come upstairs and start chatting some waffle, yeah, yeah. you know, on the microphone. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah, I mean that, I mean that, yo, yo, all that. Yeah. yeah, listen, I could do all that all day. You know what you, I mean? But You know, you said it's like a cycle. What I see it as, you remember when you're in, um, when you'd go to Blackpool or Morecambe as a kid or yeah. wherever? Yes, you remember the plastic horses, and you'd have the ball that you'd throw into the circle, into like the hole, and then yes. you'd move them on. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's yeah. how I see it. Also, it's like they're all moving at a different bit, and you got to like, right, they need to catch up, or that's far enough. I can leave that to like chill a bit. Let me bring the others up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Soon yeah, yeah. you'll get to a point where they're all like at a similar level. And exactly, exactly. Moving. And I remember going to a um, to a, a filmmaking and film development workshop in London. Um, Rain Dance. It was with Rain Dance Film Festival, and the guy is really well known. He's American. Oh wait, wait, wait. Sorry, Rain Dance is the brethren of. Is it? Is it based on Sundance? Sundance. So they connected, yeah, yeah. but only loosely. Basically, well, as far as I'm aware, they might be. They might be very, very closely related. But as far as I'm aware, they're connected. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are connected. Which is huge. Yeah, man. So we were down there at this, me and Tyrone, actually, uh, the co-founder of Chicken Shop Shakespeare. And we were down there. And the guy said that oftentimes we get we, we, we get pigeonholed. We get, yes, Jose. <laughs> we get pigeonholed as like being, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an actor. I'm just, I'm just an actor. Or I, I'm a producer. Yes, I'm just a producer. I'm a producer. You know, or, I'm a director. I direct. Actually, yo, oftentimes as, a, as, a, as an actor, I have to take on the role of, of, as a producer. And I also have to write something. And at the same time, I also have to executive produce it. Mm. And, and I might have to direct something as well at the same time. So he said to us, and it's something that I right now even still use to this day when I meet people and they ask me, so what are you up to at the moment? I've just got multiple projects at various stages of development. Simple and plain. There's various projects. And, and understanding that some projects are like ready, to there. There's, you know, like, you're ready to send that off to whoever it needs to go to the next day or the next week or the next month. Some projects are just like, I'm starting this today, like, like today. That, like, this is, that's what I'm going to start today. So having those different projects, like, like you say, it keeps that, that energy kind of rolling and it, it keeps that, keeps it fresh. You know, enough of us have like one simple 
job that we go to every single day. So if you're creative, yeah, man, yo, be creative, bro. Be creative. Yeah, man. Yo, I, I people. You just read that comment. Yeah, man. Yo, this guy here has been through Hossein Official, my guy right there. He's a, he's a good kid. He's on my page. And yo, I, I got a lot of love for him, man. He's got a real, a whole lot of passion um, for for just like, acting for for the film and theatre industry. And I think he's going to go places, man. He came into this country um, a refugee and they wanted to send him home. But uh, lo and behold, he's still here now because the people of the UK got together and we all signed a petition. And my guy's still here, man. So yo, big up to him, big salute. Go check him out. I'm going to listen into his thing. Before we go, though, I need to say hello to my son. Hello, son. Hi, Ren. You all right, our kid? Yes, I am. Are you asleep? Lovely. Yeah, all right. Nice one. Easy DJ, Trini. What are you saying? <laughs> but, yo, there was another question that you had. No, <laughs> to be fair, mate, like, obviously, you've got to listen to your boy and that sort of, but if I could get, no, another, no. Couple, get another couple of questions in, that'd be sick, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Cool, cool. So, was I, that I, one that I, I, like? I feel like... Um, one of the things that I get from you, like, is you, you're a presence. You are a presence, man. Well, so, like, a lot of what you've done previously, like, I mean, maybe you want to list off a couple of your uh, um, bodies of work and everything. Hmm. But w one thing I'd say is, like, you're making impressions. So, when you're saying that there's projects to go, you're on with different stuff, is there also a lot of the behind the scenes that people don't see that you're on with? And do you think it's going to be a spark where it's like, boom? Or, like, yeah. what, you know, like, to me, success is defined by we're doing what we love. But there's a yeah. level of success where it's like, okay, you know, I'm literally doing all the time what I love. Do you, do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 so yeah. So, like, where, where are you on that sort of, like, that, that barometer? Um, I'd definitely say I'm getting to that point where I'm able to do what I love all of the time. Um. I, I now I'm at a place where even even up until like, it was weird because I said at the beginning of this year, I don't have to go and get another little job now because I know that for the last three, four years, I've always got a call, whether it's to go and do a rehearsed read or to go and do a theatre production or to go and shoot something for Sky One or Channel Four. Or, and it might only be a small part, don't get me wrong. I'm not, not hitting the, I'm not hitting hit home runs and haymakers right now just yet, but it's definitely getting there. So I'm definitely on that the part of the barometer where it's like I'm halfway to being able to do what I love to do all the time. And actually, I don't think there is any such thing as being able to do what you do love to do all the time. I actually think that in order to do what you do, uh, uh, what you love all of the time, you have to do some of the stuff like like paperwork and send a couple of emails. Yeah. Like I've got my very first the sponsors admin. this year. Yeah, man, the admin stuff. Um, I got a couple of first sponsors this month. And yeah, I had to work to get them, man. I had to graft, I had to, you know, and they were they were family and friends. And I had to I treat it like a real, a real job. Oh and that stuff I didn't really enjoy doing as such. Now I'm getting through to the stuff where I've got to shoot a monologue. I'm actually worn out because I'm like, oh yeah, I spent all that time getting these people and I don't want to disappoint them. So boy, I better dig deep, you know. So what I'm yeah, man, what I'm getting at, I guess, is that there's things that you like, I love acting, but sometimes I've woke up and I'm like, oh boy. Boy, I don't know when I'm gonna get another another chance to just do me. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I'm going into rehearsals constantly. When am I gonna get a chance to just have some downtime, some relaxed time with the family? So it goes in peaks and troughs and ups and downs. But actually, yo, being able to act and do that as my job, that's what is 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 the realization of yo. I'm 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 actually getting there. I'm actually getting there. And there's something that um I heard. Recently, I think it might have been Napoleon Hill or, or someone. I, I listened yeah, to a lot of yeah. inspirational material. And it, in fact, I've heard it for years ago. And it says that the success is the progressive realisation of a worthy ideal. Success is the progressive realisation of a worthy ideal. And that, for me, I was like, what does that mean? And it clicked one day that success it, it is, is, it, it's, it's, it's not this thing of, I've got the thing. It's actually... The thing of I'm on my way to getting it, and you like, have a particular <laughs> like you have a particular level of where you believe you can reach a market. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the progression. Of exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many times have you heard the stories where people get somewhere and then they're like, uh, "What do I do now?" And then it all goes downhill. Do you mm. know what I mean? It all messes up. However, like 
are constantly wanting to be better, which some people see as like greed or, or like, oh, he's got enough talent already. What, what's it? Actually, it's me wanting to progress myself. And that leads me on to that point that you made about like the next generation um, and being an inspiration for them. There's enough man out there chatting, oh, rap, shap, nah, rap, 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 all that jazz, yeah? All of that. We can do all that all day. It's, it's easy. Honestly, I, I've seen it. It's easy. There's so many people doing it that it, it must be easy because uh, there's some whack rappers out there, no true. But point I'm getting at, though, is that I've had young people come to me and go, you that guy that I saw on the stage at the Playhouse, innit? Oh, my God. Oh, you, you was good, man. Yo, you was sick. Yo, I'm like, wasn't want, want that a Christmas carol? Uh, you came to a Christmas carol and you, you gassed off of a Christmas carol. Wow. And that, these are youths that are like, you know, man, I've got a tracksuit on in town. You get me? Look like he's ready to bally up and rob somebody. But lo and behold, he's just a human being just like me. And he needs inspiring the same way I need inspiring. And there was one time I went out, yeah, and I was on a night out. And <laughs> I was with some guys that I was doing a play with at the time. And we were in Leeds. So we'd just come from our show, went to the um, to this rave. It was like a Trevor Nelson rave or certain um, Christmas time. And I kept bumping into people that I knew. But you know what it's like when you ain't seeing people for time. It's kind of like, oh, yo, what you saying? What you saying? So these guys are like, yo, do you know everybody? I'm like, nah, nah <laughs> not quite. Look, I don't know him over there. And the person turned around and I knew him. <laughs> They're like, yeah, all right. So I do know him. But actually, the amount of people that came up to me and said, yo, I just love the fact that you're acting and, and the fact that you, you, you're continuing to do it. Like, And people that I went to drama school with and not even drama school, college and stuff with, people that I was, you know, connected and doing little theatre groups with when I was a bit, you know, right at the beginning. Uh, all like, yo, I'm glad that you kept on doing it because it's inspiring. So yeah, man. But I'm also I'm looking at next the next sort of year. I want to get some acting drama classes for the next generation, man. Um, and just uh, be an enabler, be somebody who can empower the next generation to to do what they what they can do. And I think it's a great outlet uh, and acting because sometimes we want to scream and shout, man. We sometimes yeah. we want to punch up things. I think the, 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 the situations that life sometimes presents to uh, the more yeah. challenged people, once you can channel and know how to utilise and engage with that energy and that, 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 that place within, that gut or what have you, yeah. you can really channel that into some powerful... Oh, definitely, world. definitely. Yeah. And I remember, I remember being at drama school and a couple of people being like, yo, well, I, got, I was so raw, like it was so... And that's because I had all of these emotions that, I'd, you know, being from the ends as well, you grow up, you see a lot, man. You you, you experience a lot. You know, I remember my and heart. You submerge you, it. Yeah, and you suppress it. You, do, you, you put it all down there. But actually having that outlet, like I said, sometimes you want to scream and shout and actually the rehearsal room, the, the, the rehearsal space, that is a safe place to do that. That's a safe place to kind of, to, to go a bit crazy, to, to, to let all of that, that pent up energy out. Um, and so like, I want to create that safe space for people and, and enable them to just, yeah, man, explore and see some of the things that I've seen, man. Because even if, if my dad said to me one time, he went to me, son, you go in places where they sing, you know. I went, oh, what do you mean? You've never been to see a show? You're like, no, 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 what I mean, son. And he was a bit offended by it. He said, what I mean, son, yeah, is that you go in, you actually go in places. You know how many people spend their lives in a five, ten mile radius? They don't go out of Leeds, they don't go out of London, they don't go out of this place or that place, this, this little area that they live in. They don't go out of there. And that's because of just in that habit. But even in this country, you get me going to going to, to Quay and Exeter, performing in Oxford, you know, Shrewsbury, and Bristol, Lang all different kinds of parts of Lancashire. There's some parts that I didn't even care to remember the name of. Like I was like, nah, I don't even like this period. But actually being able to go there and see, rather than assuming that, yo, Stockport's a shit -o. Actually, I went there and there's some lovely parts of stuff. <laughs> some nice <laughs> parts. Vibes. Oh, God, it can't be a vibe. It can't be, man. It can't be. But yeah, man. Yeah. You, you know what you were saying before about uh, the people who come up to you? Like, I get that. Do you feel like people who maybe still had an ambition and a passion for it, but they look like caring through you because you're the one that's almost like... Channeling it, still and on with it, and they're like, "There, yeah, it, doing it. yeah, I'm yeah definitely." And then you can almost like feel that energy and channel and charge. Oh and yeah, definitely, that. definitely. The amount of times that I've been down and been like, "Yo, there's no work coming," and then I'll speak to somebody, I'll bump into somebody, and they're like, "Oh, I saw you on this thing the other day, Ladell." Like, what thing was that? 
I don't know, but it was on and you was on it. It was an advert, yo. Blah, blah. I've even had people be like, one of my, one guy I know, he came to me one time and he was like, yo, fam, when are you going to make it then? I was like, what do you mean? He said, when are you going to make it, G? Because you know what it is. You know what it is? I'm waiting, you know. I keep telling people, my dog is going to make it. All right. All right, cool. And my man got angry. He's like, yo, G, you know what it is? You know what it is, bro. You need to do it and you need to do it this year. <laughs> Boy, easy now. Easy now. Thankfully, that was earlier on this year. So, yeah, he's not coming for me yet. <laughs> we'll let 2021 come around. And if I'm body bag, you lot know why, innit? <laughs> It's true though, isn't it? And it's, it's inspiring, man, that people still care and they actually yes, like, fair, you the, know. Rooting, the rooting. Yeah, yeah, for real people are. And, and sometimes it feels like nobody's got your back, man. And it can be lonely being a creative, especially like times like now. People are really like, I, I can see that there's going to be a lot of actors who are going to say, oh, I can't do this no more. I'm going to have to go and get a job when all this is over. Um, but actually, believe me, like people are rooting for you. You know, people that you didn't even realise, your next door neighbour, you know, you know, oh, Wendy from next door that walks a dog every Sunday morning, you know, only once a week, but she gets it out there. You know what I mean? And she's there like, oh, I saw you the other day on the telly. Me? Yeah, 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 I did, I did. Yeah, and it was, it was great to see. I, I told myself, I said to him, go and put on Channel 4 now. I know that lady lives next door to me. He's lovely. <laughs> Yo, there's people like, just random people, you know, that, that actually see you and, and think, wow. And the amount of people that, that that will be out there that are supporting you from afar, from afar, and they're yeah. your real heroes. Do you get me? They're your real heroes and the real people that really want to see you do well. Uh, we've all got them, man. And nah, it's just man. a case of like being open to them as well. I, I did my uh, stand-up show. I went on my own tour last year. I did yeah. Leeds, Manchester, London, went Australia, Easy. did Melbourne, Sydney. And the most nerve-wracking thing of it all yeah. was the first show at Leeds, I had people from my first school I've not seen in, like, 20 years. And, like, it, same Leeds, it's same Bradford. They've, yeah, come yeah. To, they've come to support, but if I was if I was rubbish, they'd be like, like they're calling me out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so I had to, I had to deliver. But These are the people who are... And they supported, and because I was good, and I was just, like, so overcome with, like... Fulfillment and gratitude—the fact that they've come, they took the time out. And we might not speak, but they're still following and they've still come to support. That's it. That's key, man. It's crucial. It's crucial. Like these, you know. I'm I'm looking down here, yeah. And the amount of people that have just like popped in, mm. yeah. they're like, "Yo, why? But here's a YouTube big head boss. Yeah, man, I'm out again. Peace." And yo, that's all we need. It's just some love 100. from people to say, "Yo, keep doing your thing, man. 100. Keep doing your thing." And that's what I love about Leeds because it's a small, a small city. We've got a big heart, man. We've got a big heart and people look out for each other, man. So, yo, yo, Leeds is on the up. Everywhere's had their time as well now. Like, London's London. You get me? Yeah, I mean, Liverpool had the Beatles and that. You get me? <laughs> <laughs> Manchester's had, had it's having its time right now as well. No, it is. Mean? It's I'm having its time. Money is having its oh, time. Birmingham. Right, you've had yours as well. You get me? But, Leeds. Leeds. Leeds and Bristol. Leeds and Bristol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bristol's a bagging place, but I love Bristol, me. Bristol is bagging. Have you got an agent? I have got an agent. My agent was just in here, actually. Yeah, I've seen that comment yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, so got... yeah. Brimmore Associates. Yeah, I'm with Brimmore, man. She's lovely. She's, yeah, 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 yeah. How, yeah. how, how do, I, 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 sorry, I know you want to go listen to your boy. And no, that's cool, man. Up, got but, a bit uh, time. How does, how does that work? How does, um, you know, that relationship with an agent and reaching out to get your roles or how does that sort of, uh, that that dynamic work? Yeah, so I've always been very active within my own circle and my network has like gone, grown from strength to strength and will continue to do so. Um, for me, like my agent's there to kind of push me to get the bigger roles, the TV, the film roles and that sort of thing. Um, is this, yeah. when you say push, have they got access to get you that? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So they're based out in London. They've got, a, a, you know, the right network for me to be able to kind of push into, to open up some doors for me that I wouldn't necessarily be able to open. And on top of that, like, I don't necessarily have all the time to be liaising with the producers and to be going through the contract and making sure that it's right. And to, when one contract runs out, but yeah, the work's still in circulation, you know, and my agent's the one who will go and will deal with all of that. Um, so 
it's good. It's good having an agent. It's amazing having an agent. And it's it's crucial that you have a great relationship. Some people just want an agent to be able to say, I've got an agent. Mm. And that's it. Yeah, I've got an agent. I'm, I've got an agent. Yeah, I've got my agent said I should. That's great. That's fine. If that's what you want. But actually, I want a, a meaningful relationship with my agent. And that's what I think I've got. My you agent get to came... speak with them on the regs. With yeah, man. So if I, if I, I'm going to bail my agent after this, just to make a point. You get me? And I, I know she'll pick up the phone. If she can't pick up the phone, she'll call me right back. And that's what I think. And obviously, is she check this out as well, and that. That's what I'm saying. So, with that that support that you have, it's it's all about that support network. And when when I reach to a stage where where I'm ready, and I don't need somebody, because I said to my agency when I first signed up with them, I, I remember saying that, that I need somebody who's going to be patient with me, is going to hold my hand because I'm a father, uh, and I'm a family man, and I'm 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 based up in Leeds, so I'm not in London. So if I like a f once I think once I've had a, a crazy uh, an audition and I needed to go down at four o'clock and I use that as an example uh, like that instance when I was I needed to be on the train for four o'clock but I woke up at four thirty. Most agents might have gone, you missed it. What what's wrong with you? Da -da 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 -da. I'm sure we we're gonna have to release you. And actually that's what I did get. That's what I did get from one of the one of the um other agents within my agency. So he turned around to me and was like, ah, it's, you don't think you've got the discipline that we need from our actors and da, da, da. I was like, wow, okay, great. Well, and I just sent him a, a genuine email back just saying, look, I'm a father. I was on the train. I was meant to be on the train for 4.30, et cetera. And I could tell that my agent that I signed with had had a conversation with him because his tone the next time we spoke was totally, totally different. So agents are crucial, but your relationship with your agent is is, is vitally important, not just the agency itself. Some people are a, 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 a little fish in a big old pond. You get me? They, they signed up to big, big agencies, but yet right now that agents, that, that agency is not concerned with them because they're not mm -hmm. enough of a profile. So actually having a good relationship with my agent and knowing that I can speak to her confidently about my finances, about can you chase this payment? Or I didn't like the way that this happened. Or I love the way that this happened. Can we make more of this happening? Uh, so, yeah, man, relationships crucial in, when it comes down to agents. I think when you look to do the um, acting classes for the youth, I mm. think this sort of information as well, how to deal with agents, what you should be looking for is critical. Yeah, well. yeah. Oh, like, definitely. I, I really feel that, it, it, like you say, a lot of people want to embellish how well they're doing by just getting somebody that represents them rather than absolutely into who they absolutely want their best interest there you go you know and it, and it's all it's, it's it's all a facade kind of like it, it's a very pretentious it can be a very pretentious industry but actually when you get into it yeah when you get into it everybody in the industry is quite nice everybody's quite like everybody's moving towards the same goal whether it's it's me as an actor or whether it's the guy who does the grips or it's the person who, who makes sure that everything's reset, you know, just it's the guy the who does props. Everybody wants the best outcome. And, and oftentimes in life, people want the best outcome for you as a person and they want to see you do well. Um, so yeah, man, it, it, it's, it's crucially important to just, yeah, stay humble and keep, keep going along on the journey, man. My, my final one for you, and thank you for your time, brother. It's nah, cool, man. Chat, Blessings. Man. It's yeah, it's level. been good. You knew it was going to be. That's why I got you <laughs> one, bro. That's what I'm you saying. You know. <laughs> would you ever consider stand-up comedy? I would, you know. I wouldn't mind a little bit of stand-up. I've, I've shied away from it. I'll tell you why. Do you know why? Go on. <laughs> if I get mood, I'm going to be Sorry, there. I don't want to swear your son's on. Sorry. I, I, no, it's I, all right. Sorry, Listen. sorry. Nice, nah, cool, um, man. I'll be up and knocking it off. Forget that. Listen. I know, I know, I know. I know. One of, I know, one, of I know. one of my greatest moments uh, being a stand-up comedian was when no one laughed. Like, fortunately, <laughs> no one's been, but no one, no one laughed. I'll tell you the full version when I know no kids are watching. But I'll tell you the full version. Uh, but it, it really, like, it was like, is that it? Like, you know, like, you think it's going to be like, oh, no. <laughs> and then yeah. it happened, and it's like, <laughs> and now get on this the psychology because I'm all about the psychology of the audience yeah. what I'll do is I'll do some shock to get certain people and get the backs up of other people I'll do some yeah. deep felt that'll get other people but other people might think it's a bit too much and then yeah. I'll kill the room like purposely like yeah. do something where no one's laughing and okay, I purposely yeah, yeah, yeah. do it and I'm like I've got you all now I've got you yeah, all yeah, 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 yeah. because I've yeah. experienced the death on stage yeah. I've experienced no one 
responding yeah. and everyone's like, how are you going to get us back? And then when you get everybody back, everyone's collectively with you because it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you've got the room. So yeah, yeah. That's, you've yeah. got the personality for it, man. And and you know what I'm interested in? I think you could do character-based comedy as well. It's like you could almost do, you uh, know, you, you've got such a wide ability and wealth of... Instagram just kicked us off. Hopefully, everybody will uh, come back on. We were about to conclude anyway, but I do feel that we're a real poignant moment that I wanted to make because Liddell's a sick guy. Uh, if you're not aware of Liddell, uh, go follow him on all socials. Check out his YouTube. Give him a follow, man. He's a proper solid brother. An amazing, amazing, amazing performer. Like The brother needs to be seen by a bigger stage. Uh, so hopefully they'll come back onto the group. We can conclude our chat. It's only the last few uh, yes he's here. Liddell, sorry about that. Uh, Insta, kick me out, man. If you want to send me another request, yes, sick guy. Uh, we we'll go. It's only another couple of minutes, if I'm being fair. I know he's got a bounce. Uh, and we're just wrapping up there before Instagram kicked us off. Right, no, we Yeah, man. Yo, sorry about that. Instagram, right, cool, like, man. it's all on the live. It only has, like, a certain, like, say, like, 40, 50 minutes. But it didn't even give me a warning of a countdown or anything. Oh, is that what it usually does? does? So, it, yeah, right, it just cool, hijacks cool. us off. But, uh, fair enough, fair enough. But, no, no, I just want to wrap up, man. I, I really feel like what you could bring to the stand-up game, I think that you could do characters. I think that you yeah. could do real witty things, like, with, like, your own, like, material. Mm. I think you could really deep with certain stuff. You've got okay. the presence, you've got the poise, I, you've got the cheeky northern charm. Like, I <laughs> honestly, bro, I, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. really feel like, you know, if it's another outlet to add, mm. just start mm. writing some material, do some open mics and trust me, like, I don't think it'll take far for you to like reach far. Yeah, man, you know what? We'll have a chat, man. Most definitely. Definitely. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. Definitely. Because we did some at, um, at drama school. We did a little bit of uh, uh, stand up at drama school. We only did like three to five minutes, I think it was. And yeah, I had, I had him in the palm of my hand, man. I, I must say, my, my friend, I must say, I, I did quite enjoy it myself as well. So no, yeah, man, I, I, and I do enjoy the comedy side of stuff as well. Who, yeah. who, who, uh, which comedians do you sort of uh, aspire or like? Or, or, or oh, watch boy, you know what? I'm going old school with it. Like, you, you, you red foxes, you know. You get me. In fact, I loved, really? I loved as well, like what Jamie Foxx used to do with his music as well, because that was really, yeah, really man. clever. That was, that was, I'm doing that way back in the early 90s. You know, that Bro, was Bro, you're Jamie Foxx. <laughs> Bro, I get that all the time. Is that right? Who, who would look at Jamie Foxx now and say, and if you were to look at Jamie Foxx and go, how did you start? No one's going to go stand up. Yeah. No one's going to say that you're on Def Jam. It's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right, you know. You're right. Willie Robo, do you remember him? You don't remember Willie Robo? Oh, my days. I saw him. He's one of the Def Jams. Yeah, he's one of the Def Jam guys. He's one of the Def Jam. All of that era of people there. You get that? That was what I grew up on. And he used to go into Leon's room, yeah? To go into Leon's room and nick the CD, not take the DVD cover, just the DVD itself. And then take it, take it home, watch it, and then bring it back the next week and then take another one. Because obviously I wasn't allowed to, to watch him because I was too young in it. But. Yeah, man. <laughs> I remember nabbing a couple of DVDs from him. <laughs> I love that, mate. The Bernie Mac one's the one. The Bernie Mac, yeah, but one. again, like, Bernie Mac himself is, like, legendary for me. Remember watching the, the Bernie Mac show? Yeah, yeah, mate. Yeah. So yeah. the Bernie Mac show with kids get as well on yes. Channel 4. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Hanging with Mr. Cooper are the most yeah. underrated, like, TV shows about, mate. The Bernie Mac show was gangster. Isn't it? You used to talk to the camera. But look at Bernie, you know, Bernie's someone uh, that's his soul that I look at as a, yeah, a real, man. like, uh, inspiration because he didn't make it till, say, 32, 33. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he was in the game for a long time and um, good multitasking. He was in the game <laughs> yeah. for uh, a long, long time. And, you know, before he passed, look at where he ended up, man. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I'm on about, not just, like, where he ended up. I'm on about, when I look at, like, outtakes of uh, Ocean's Eleven, Brad mm. Pitt's going, if it weren't for Bernie Mac on this set, mm. George Clooney's going, Bernie Mac on this set. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, yeah, the yeah, realness yeah, yeah, of yeah. a brother like that, that's, yeah, it's true. you know about what it's like on set behind the yeah, scenes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 for sure. 
you know that 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 relationship can be fresh breeds out on 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 the camera yeah 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 now now you're right you're right man you're right yeah bro yo you got me thinking now you know yeah that is what this chat was about people. my brother yeah and, yeah uh, with that i'll leave you be thank you uh, yo blessings <laughs> yo, it were always it were always gonna be one and you know you're one of them people that I know we might not get to like interact often, but you're yeah, always yeah, someone yeah. that I hold in such a high regard and high Likewise, esteem. Man. Likewise, not just brother. because you you run with your graft, which I believe I am in the city. I think we're in a similar. Mm. Well, you're ahead with an agent and that, but nah. I feel like no, no, no. I'm not nitpicking. This is my Jerry's final thought. You just got to buy. You've got a point. <laughs> sorry, You've got a sorry, point. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, but I feel I feel like um, you know we're in a similar boat in a sense of. That quote you said is, you know, we want to better ourselves in being the great because we know the ability that we have. Mm, but mm. I look at you and I honestly, mate, like I adore like your level of performance, oh, well, mate. I honestly I, do, mate. Well, I, like you. you are like somebody that I look. I look at a mate, right? One of my mates, Daniel Lawler, who I mm. look at. He should have been a professional footballer, like, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And I was like. And I look at you and it's like, you like if I see you in a film poster in two, three, five years' time, yeah, mm. that I'm just going to salute because it's not going to yeah, be a yeah, shock. Yeah, yeah. It's just an inevitability. Yeah, and I look yeah. at people like you because I feel like that's with me, with my own path. Mm. And I know that there's probably unwritten minor victories that we mm. go through that people don't see. That people still, don't see. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I respect the fact that, you know, you're still on with it and overcoming those minor victories to reach mm. the bigger goal. So that yeah, when yeah, you yeah, are somewhere, like, I, I, I just want you to know that I draw the inspiration as well as a creative from you, somebody in a similar situation. Yeah, man, that I know he's going through life, overcoming the same things, knowing that we're destined for great things. So, Yo. Shout out to you, shout out to you, yeah. Watching, shout out to your son, shout out to your missus. Make sure you reach out to Fire, honestly, man. I will uh, link and, and in and uh, keep the positive fight, but we stay safe through this. Yo. Can't wait to see you on the other side. We'll catch up for a drink, man. Definitely, definitely. Yo, I ain't got a cup. What? Hey, hey, coming all the way from Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Yo, blessings for our people. Yo, peace and love. Stay cool, stay safe, man. Always for you, mate. Always. Respect, man. Peace. (laughs) Right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, man. Uh, I'm Ben Random. Today has been a series of chats with people that I really embrace their, their passion for optimism through their situations through life. This is Loose Lips. I've been going since free. If you want to check out any more, add me on Instagram and check out any of the other chats. I'm going to be coming back on Wednesday with my next set of guests and I'll be returning next Monday as well with a lot more guests. So keep it locked, keep it tapped. See who I'm speaking to. Thank you, Leon, brother. Uh, Other than that, uh, I know we're going through this all together. Please keep your spirits. This is what this chat is about, really, is, you know... uh, boosting that optimism, letting you escape from reality, but letting us face what we have. But we're all in this together. We'll all get out of this together and we'll be stronger for it. So thank you all for locking in. Bless you. Stay safe. Stay cool. I'm Ben Random. Peace. Enjoy the world.